Um, so some of these examples are going to need you to finish, and some of them they're going to already be done for you. So like simplifying expressions, they did this one for you already. Solving this equation, they did this one for you already. This is the one we did, the FOIL, okay? Mm -hmm. So what we're going to do now, because they showed we fill in the boxes, now we're going to add or subtract polynomials. Now, when you're adding a poly or subtracting a polynomial, you have to just add or subtract the coefficient. Y'all know what that represents, the coefficient, the number, yes, in front. So in this example here, it says we're going to add the coefficient of like terms, do nothing to the exponents. When you do it, start with the highest exponent. So which two should I combine first? Yeah, watch your sign. So when I combine those together, what does this become? Yeah, x squared. There we go. Then which term would I combine next? Yeah, the negative 2y and the negative 6y. Yeah, so minus 8y. Okay, and then we have plus the xy. Okay, oops. Dang it, I'm oh, sorry. Okay, so now for multiplying, you have to remember multiply the coefficient, so it's still the same term, but add the exponents. So what I wanted you, I'm going to draw a line here because these are two different examples here. This first one wants you to distribute the binomial 3x to each term in the trinomial. So when I do 3x times 5x, what are you going to write to simplify that? You're close. Closer. It's 15x cubed. It says right here, add the exponent, guys. So you might need to memorize that. All right, then go to the next term. Negative 6x squared. And then the last term, minus 12x. OK, so box that. That's our answer here. All right, now they want the area of the square with the length 2x minus 3 and a width of x minus 4. So, you might need to draw a square to help you visualize this. Your length was the 2x minus 3. And your width was x minus 4. So, for area, you're doing length times width. So we're going to substitute this 2x minus 3 for our length and this x minus 4 for the width. So how would we do the area? Foil, yes. Okay, so first, we gotta stop. All right, go ahead. I'm gonna let you finish this one. We did a foil together. You finish this one. All right, did you get to 2x squared minus 11x plus 12? All right. Okay, next page. All right, for your functions, you're gonna have to be able to do it three or uh, four different ways. All right, so yes or no questions here, just reviewing, identifying if it's a function or not. On the first one, the table, would these set of points be a function, yes or no? Yes. This is yes. How do we determine? Yeah, your x cannot have more than one y. So just check if your x is repeat, and then if it has a different y. All right, what about these set of points here? That's a no. Where is it a no? It's a 10, 10 right there. We have a 10, 4, and 10, 8. All right. Then make sure if you get a graph, you could do the vertical line test. 
would this first graph be a function? No. It does not pass the vertical line test. It touches twice. Come on, guys. What about this next? I don't know if you can see it, but the actual line is horizontal. Yep, this is yes. All right, verbally, if I have number of floors, they're talking about like the, like the levels, like different stories, like first story, second story. So if you have the number of floors in a hotel versus the height of the hotel. Yeah. Each student in your school versus their age. No. Yeah. All right. Now with an equation, symbolic is just saying, can you do it from an equation or a mapping? Would this equation be a function? No. No. This is a no. Why? No. Yeah, it's a vertical line. X equals, whenever you have X equal a number, it's vertical. All right, what about the mapping? Would this be a function? Yes. Yeah, this is a yes. All right, so then we're just going to go into function notation. Okay, just some more notes here. They're just trying to remind you. You can't repeat x values and vertical line tests on the graphs. Uh, I would underline this because make sure you know f of x is the same as y or your output. So if I have y equals 3x, it's the same thing saying f of x equals 3x minus 8. And then to solve. So what I did was, in fo function notation, the x is inside the parentheses. So if I see a number inside the parentheses, that represents your x. And so this is what it says to do. Plug in the negative 2 for x and then solve. So they're just showing you the work here to how they solved it. Okay, so understand f of x, I'm oh, sorry, I did that backwards. If I have a x comma f of x like that, that's the same thing as x comma y. Okay, so they're giving you a point here. So we're going to do finding the value. So we have to plug it in. I would maybe add this little note right here, plug in the value for... Um, for your x and saw. Mm -hmm. Must use parentheses. So if I'm going to do this pencil and paper, then I'm going to do parentheses here. Square plus three parentheses and then minus four. And I'm going to plug in this value for x. So this should be negative 2 parentheses squared plus 3 parentheses negative 2 then minus 2. So I'm going to type it in the calculator just like I have it with my parentheses. And I have that shown here and that means our value here is a negative 6. Must use parentheses, guys. If you do not, you're going to make errors on the test. They try to trick students like that. So this value is negative 6. Or we can change this to think of this as your y equals. So if you go to y equals, type in. Oh, that's not the equation, sorry. We had x squared plus 3x minus 4, what do you do after you go, you get the equation in the calculator to find our answer, our value? Second. Yeah, second graph. graph to your table. Remember, we're trying to find when x is a negative 2. There's your negative 2 in that column right there. There is your y value, negative 6. Does that make sense? Okay, yeah. all right. So the difference with this problem and the second example is now you're trying to find the value of x. You're trying to find the x. The x is missing. We know that f of x equals 19. So if you want to do y equals 3x minus 2, 
make sure you're looking at the correct value. So go to your calculator, go to y equals, we're going to put 3x minus 2. Go to the table, read the question again. I want you to read the question. What are they asking you to find? So what is our answer? Seven. Yes. It's last earlier this morning we had a lot of people trying to go down to nineteen. That's wrong. Our y is nineteen. So I'm trying to find the x value when the y value is 19. All right, so make sure you read and you answer correctly. So this was x equals 7. So the point would be 7 comma 19. All right, so your law of exponents, this is on the formula chart, you just got to make sure we understand. So these are just examples to help you remember what to do, okay? And this is how it would be on star. So you would first need to simplify your numbers. What does 5 over 10 reduce to? One half. Yeah, so that would become 1 half. Then you're going to go to your x values. I have x to the third and an x. What exponent is on the bottom? So this is saying x to the third minus 1. When I'm dividing, I subtract. Then I go to the next variable, which is a y. And I don't have a y down here, so I'm just going to say y. Oh, I wrote that wrong. I just realized. The exponent is not a neg a one. It's a two. I didn't see that right there. So it's x to the third minus a negative two. All right. So now going to my y here. There's no y's down here, so we got y to the negative two. And then now I'm going to my z's. Z to the first power minus two. All right, so when I simplify this, we have 1 half x to the fifth power, right? 3 minus the negative 2 makes that a positive 5, y to the negative 2, and z to the negative 1. Can I keep it like this? What needs to be simplified? Yeah, these two negatives. Do you know how to make that positive? Yeah, put it over 1 so it'll be on the bottom. You're right. It would end up being... Like 1 over y, like that, y over 2, right? Okay, so when I put it all together, guys, here's our answer. The x to the fifth is on the top of the fraction, okay, because it was positive. The 2 already is on the bottom. So now we have y to the second power and z. So most of the time, they try to get you with the negative exponents. So I'm going to circle these two because these are star-like questions. So on here, it says the square has a side length of 5x squared y. The area of the square can be found using a equals s squared. What is the area? So they're asking us to find what is the area of the square. All right, do we recognize in our square each side, 5x squared y, is going to be the, si the same? Okay, so if it's the same, then what is our method of finding the area of a square. Yeah, you're going to do the same thing as length times width. So substitute your length, what could be our length, the 5x squared y times the 5x squared y. So now you have to simplify this. What's going to be the answer? No, not two. Because that would be perimeter. What's the area? 
It'd be 25. Yeah, 20. Yeah. X to the fourth, yes, Y to. All right. Because you have polynomials besides multiplying, like we just did, you have to be able to factor. All right. So, an example one, do y'all remember? I'm giving you. A clue using X puzzle. So how do we set this up? Yeah, make your X puzzle negative 10 on top, negative 3 on the bottom. All right. Now what do you need? You need a negative 5 and a positive 2. So because we're giving the factors, we have to write it in factor form, which is... Just now using our parentheses, x minus 5 and x plus 2. All right. Okay, example 2 says you need to factor using slide and divide. Why do we have to slide and divide here? Because of 3 on the x. Yeah, there's a 3 on the x squared. So, we, what do we do to that 3? Yeah, slide it and multiply it to the negative 7. So now in your puzzle, what's going to be on top? Negative 21 and 20 on the bottom. So what factors give me a negative 21 that have a sum of 20? 12 and 2 doesn't give me 21. Negative 20. <coughs> Excuse me, sorry. I wrote that wrong. Sorry. Okay, do you see why the 21 is the positive one? Yes. Okay, because it's bigger and we have 20. All right. So now we're going to write our factors x minus 1 and x plus 21. And now what, since we slide and multiply, John Mark, sit up, please. What do we need to do now? Divide by three. Divide by three, yes. Can the three go into one? So what do we have to do here? Three. Bottoms up, yep. If it doesn't go in evenly, we make the bottom come to the front. So this becomes 3x minus 1. What about this one? Yeah, so x plus 7. And then there is our factor form. For it to be factor form, you need to have parentheses. All right, this is just a review of how the calculator could help you using y equals and each. Is it is it because you already have this? Why it's not done? Mm -hmm. All right. Then you're gonna have uh, arithmetic um, sequences. This is remember you have to have a common difference. And you have to come up with the formula. The formula. Sorry. Is a sub n equals a sub 1 plus d parentheses n minus 1. Put that away. What are we going to have to do to find the formula for this sequence? Because you have to know this formula and know how to use it. What's our, what do we need? Does it have a common difference? No. Yes. What is it? Two. So that means your D equals six. Okay, what else do we need? 
you need the first term. The first term is the two. That's the a sub one. So now you can plug it into the formula. A sub n equals two plus six parentheses n minus one. Then you need to do what? Distribute, yep. You have to distribute the six first and then simplify this. All right, so I got two plus six and minus six. So what's the final equation? Uh, six and minus four. Yep, six n minus four. So your a sub n equals six n minus four. All right, they want us to find the next three terms knowing that the first term is three and looks like we're going to take that first term and add two to it each time. So it would be three, then five, then seven. Does that make sense? Okay, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you something real quick. I gotta pass it out to y'all. Yeah. So, no, I don't know. Someone took it. So, either you're finishing this last one or you're doing the next one. Check it off when you get it done.